and this is our Western Edition. Good evening. It began as an ordinary school day, and it was almost over when gunfire erupted this afternoon. This deadly mass shooting happened in Parkland, Florida, about 20 miles northwest of Fort Lauderdale at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, attended by about 3,000 students. A suspect was taken into custody about a mile from the scene. We're going to have much more on him in just a moment. We do have extensive coverage tonight, beginning with Manuel Bohorkas in Parkland. We do caution you, some of the video you're about to see is graphic. Manny? That's right, Jeff. And a law enforcement source tells CBS News the gunman appears to have pulled the school's fire alarm to create chaos and then began firing. Those who could ran, hiding in classrooms, even closets, while the shooting continued. Just as the school day was ending, the shooting started. This cell phone video captured the gunfire and the screams of the high school students trapped inside their classrooms. I'm coming out to the east side with the casualty and ambulance standing by a critical casualty. The sight of what's become an all too familiar panic of students fleeing hands raised in single file, only matched by the images of. Joining us now, Pat Buchanan, author, commentator, presidential advisor. I uh, wrote a terrific piece, uh, A Moment of Unity in a Disintegrating World. Uh, he joins us now. Uh, Pat, it's good to talk to you. The, the, the patter that we're hearing repeated. The same lines from mostly Democrats on the size of the magazine, the bump stock, he purchased 33 guns in a year, thoughts and prayers aren't enough. Da -da 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 -da. They're all reading from the same tedious playbook. They do get back on the same hobby horse and start riding it again and again and again every time one of these incidents occurs. But I think there's really, in, in this, I haven't seen, Laura, any any, you know, mailed agenda or statement of beliefs or, you know, some aggressive note about the, what the national government did to him. I think what we got here is, is something that's fairly clear and fairly simple. This guy decided to end his life. He decided to commit suicide either by gunshot to his mouth or either by a police shooting him. And he planned to go out as the greatest mass murderer in American history. And he moved all those guns in over five days and plotted this all out and began shooting and killing people down there uh, in order that he would exceed anyone else. For example, the, the thing that comes to mind is when I was fairly young, Charlie Whitman, 1966, I believe it was, went up in that tower, Texas Tower at Austin, mm -hmm. and shot, I believe, uh, 41 people and murdered 15 uh, this is similar to that. It's just a, he wants to end his life in a blaze of what for him might be glory and uh, what for the nation is um, uh, incredible horror. Well, I think that Republicans tend to themselves uh, get into a defensive crouch when the Democrats jump on their moral high, high ground here uh, and start lecturing on guns. And I think it's precisely at this time where you know, Americans should realize that there's not a government solution for every problem, that there is you evil know, in the world, real well, evil. This is exactly right. This is what the interesting question to me here is, what kind of evil does it take? I mean, here's someone with a dead soul. His conscience is completely dead. I mean, I don't care how bad a number of people are, they would recoil you know, at firing a semi-automatic or an automatic weapon into a crowd of concert goers, none of whom they can have a grudge against, probably none of whom they know, and just do that, the, the callous and total indifference to the value of human life, that suggests to me, you know, uh, you know something, is, something is dead inside. What was, was it Raskolnikov who said, you know, if God is dead, everything is permissible? And this individual clearly believes that he's not going to suffer any more other than that gunshot to his head that killed him for what he has done, this horror he has perpetrated on living human beings. You know, I'd really be more interested in the character of that man's soul and, and what it was like than, uh, than whether he sent some agenda, you know, that uh, you know, the federal government has abused me and I've had trouble with the IRS. 
Well, I think that we live in a society where uh, there is so much depravity. I mean, at every turn, I was in New York the uh, last couple of days, and it's fun to go to New York. I mean, I had to be there for Fox, and uh, you know, I have a lot of great memories with my brothers there as a kid, and you know, even when the difficult times of crime and so forth. It's always it's always been fun. But walking across Times Square, uh, now you run into women that have just Band-Aids on their breasts and are essentially wearing thongs, uh, walking around with body paint, and uh, children. Uh, there's just <laughs> it's a, the level of sort of pornography, violent pornography, and run-of-the-mill just kind of gross stuff. Right, it it's is everywhere. You know, whatever they say about the the 1950s, which were a pretty good time, and they weren't a, wasn't a saintly decade. The the complete dechristianization of the culture, and of uh, of the 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 natural, I mean, the prohibitions in society, and the restraints, and the beliefs that people followed about uh, about modesty and decency and morality and things. That's gradually. It takes generations. Once the, the, the root is cut, but the root has been cut, and uh, I think it's, the situation is not going to get better and better. Indeed, we've had, must have been, now there are so many we can't count of these mass murders where individuals just go in and shoot and kill as many people as they can, knowing full well that they're going to command unprecedented coverage. Look what we got out there. You got every commentator talking about it. We're talking about it a couple of days later. Yeah. You got all Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. Like all there's no other there. story. There's no other story. Well, exactly. And this is what. And this guy is a nobody, and now he He's is a somebody. somebody. I, I, that's why I reject covering this 24/7. I, re, I don't. I don't like it. It doesn't feel right to me. Uh, and well, it's, this it, is why. See, this is the currency he wanted to be paid in. And he's being paid. This was a success for this guy because he's got, I mean, we got North Korea and Puerto Rico and everything all off page one. And, and you keep, you read more and more about him and, uh, and you know, and the 100,000 he sent to the Philippines and is there a note somewhere and, and all this interest in him. And nobody gave a damn about that guy for his whole life. And now everybody in the world is talking and writing about him, which is his reward. He succeeded, and it's perverse in that the media well, culture, the society. yeah, that the media culture, which back in 1996 when I started at MSNBC, I dubbed it Tragedy TV, TTV, whether it was John Vinay Ramsey or Chandra Levy or Natalie Holloway, it, it, it there these stories in a way are easier to cover. Well, you know, but they t say something about society because the. Editors picking the placement and sending the reporters know what folks want to read. Well, welcome to another episode of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to be talking further on the topic we were talking about in the studios of radio station WJTN in New York. We were talking about the Florida shooting, and we were talking about not just the fact that this is a terrible, terrible crime that was perpetrated on a school, and we've seen those before, but what we were talking about further was that there is a problem in our society. There is a problem. There is a spiritual problem in society that creates an environment for these kinds of shootings, and it's a spiritual and moral uh, decline in the Christian worldview. It's a sp spiritual and moral uh, degradation of even the basic moral structures. And what happens is over time, when you begin to whittle away and degrade the moral structure of society, you're going to see things like this happen. You're going to see uh, what is happening. And we saw that uh, uh, video clip that I just played with Pat Buchanan and Laura Ingram. Pat Buchanan is arguing for a nihilist theory in the case of the Las Vegas shooter. And I to totally agree with that. In fact, I came to that conclusion before I even ran into Pat Buchanan's article on the subject. He recently wrote a subject article on the same conclusion dealing with the Florida shooter. 
And the basic uh, premise is that we are de-Christianizing, uh, demoralizing our culture, and this is the result of what happens when you de-Christianize, when you demoralize a culture, you're going to get more and more of these acts of violence, senseless acts of violence. And in the case of the Las Vegas shooter, there is still no motivation for his killing rampage. Still no motivation. It's not political. Uh, his brother went on live network television and said, this is not a political anger coming from my brother. This is not a religious problem because he didn't have any affiliation with religion. But I would say, and I think Pat Buchanan would also agree, that at core, the shooter in Las Vegas, his problem was a religious problem. It was his lack of faith. It was his lack of belief. He had given up all hope. He had given up all meaning and purpose in life. He had given up all moral foundations. And so in a state of faithlessness, in a state of atheism, nihilism creeps in. And in that dark situation, you have no future, you have no meaning, you have no purpose. And so what you do is actually meaningless in your viewpoint. You have no moral framework to giving anything what you do meaningless uh, acts. That's the only thing that can be interpreted. And so he went out with a bang. Um, and from his perspective, you would understand, he might say, well, why not go out with a bang? It doesn't mean anything. Uh, life is pointless. There is no end to life. There's no telos or end that everything is working toward. And so uh, go out with a bang and die and commit suicide. Well, the shooter in Florida now is a different situation, but his actions can also be explained by the de-Christianization of our culture. In other words, the demoralization of our culture. When you strip God out of the public square, there's a book put out by a man named John Richard Niehaus. He's now deceased, but he was a theologian and writer and author, and he wrote a book called The Naked Public Square, in which he lays out the case that in America for the last 100 to 50, 50 to 100 years, we have been slowly but surely stripping the public square, or in other words, public dialogue, public discussion in government, in academia, entertainment, and so forth. We have been stripping God from the public square. And what you get is a stark, dark, secular nihilism. You get this uh, dark, um, pointless, purposeless, meaningless, moralless uh, environment in which especially young children are raised. And you get the inability to deal with the ups and downs and the hardships of life because you have no point or purpose to life anyway. So um, this theory that uh, is being put forth by Pat Buchanan in a uh, wider uh, way that I could put it forth, but he basically goes on in his article and says that um, he quotes from the brothers Karamazov uh, by novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky, and there's a character named Ivan who says, if God is dead, all things are permissible. And what that simply means is, if God does not exist, the idea of God's law of heaven or hell as reward or punishment is nonsense. And if it is, there is no man-made law that can deter men from doing these dastardly deeds. So if you don't have any uh, judgment to come, if there's no fear of judgment, then what's to stop someone from killing in a mass shooting or wreaking havoc or carnage or blowing up the world, in fact? What would keep uh, nations from blowing up other nations if there is no judgment to come and there's no moral accountability in this life and the next life, then what's to keep them from doing these sick things? Well, there's nothing to keep them from doing those things. Uh, Buchanan goes on and he quotes, he says, in Shakespeare, Hamlet declares, conscience doth make cowards of us all. And so fearing damnation, Hamlet recoils from ending his life or extracting avenge on the king. So in this play by Hamlet, or by Shakespeare, Hamlet uh, makes an allusion to conscience, and that keeps us in check, and it keeps us from doing things we might do without some kind of moral background, without some judgment, fear of judgment. 
And uh, he goes on, uh, Buchanan says, in Stephen Paddock, the conscience was dead. He was a dead soul, a moral nihilist, a post-Christian man in a post-Christian age. So his thesis, and I totally agree with this, is that we have de-Christianized America. We're in the process of secularizing it to the point where we are now beginning to see the fruit of our secularization process. And you can also see this in Europe, for example, uh, where that, uh, that terrorist up in Norway killed 79 people. Yes, that's right, 79 people. This man in Norway uh, went to, an, mostly they were children on an island, a camp, and he went there and he took an assault rifle and he just killed 70-some uh, people on the island. He had already killed some on the mainland. And Norway is such a socialistic, uh, progressive, um, permissive nation that they gave him, get this, 21 years prison sentence for killing 79 people, which from a Christian viewpoint, from a biblical standpoint, this man should have received the death penalty. If anyone receives the death penalty, this man should have received the death penalty as a sign and a symbol of justice for all in that country, but no, he gets 21 years, which is a joke. It's a laugh. And he, when he was sentenced, he showed contempt to the judges and the people in the courtroom. It was just a mess, and that's what happens when you have the de-Christianization of culture. You begin to act in foolish ways. And so Sweden, even though there are a lot of intelligent people in Sweden, a lot of intellectuals, they are acting in a foolish way by allowing a mass murderer someone who killed 79 people, get away with it with only a 21-year jail sentence. And I, and I should say that these uh, prisons that the people have to go to in Norway are totally different from any other prison system in the world. These people live basically in luxury apartments. Uh, oftentimes, they're allowed to just go outside and stroll around. Uh, sometimes they have no fences around the, the prisons. They're allowed to just go outside and walk and enjoy the, the nice countryside. And then they go back into their uh, luxury apartment cells and they have flat screen TVs and video games, kitchens, all kinds of living room facilities, all kinds of uh, amenities that you might find in an upscale hotel. And that's Norway and that's how they, they imprison a mass murderer. And, and other people that have done violence against other people. And so this is an insane world. Well, that's just one example in Europe. Here in the United States, we're not quite there yet, but we're going toward that direction because uh, as, you, as you look on the news and these school shootings, um, my question is what brings a young man, this 19-year-old man who went in and killed 17 uh, students what and, and teachers, what gives this man the idea that he can not only go in and uh, shoot people, but what gives him the idea that then he can get away with this, and what gives other people like him, these other school shooters, the idea that they can go in and do this kind of thing? Well, the culture in which we live in today, like I said before, has been de-Christianized. So evidently, these people are not fearing. They're not fearing any kind of judgment. They're not fearing any kind of day of reckoning. They're just acting out what they want to do. And I also mentioned in a conversation that we followed up, uh, the Reverend Mill McGinnis and myself, in uh, the next conversation after the WJTN radio interview is that uh, he lives in a culture that glorifies violence. And we see this in the video games where you have video games, first person shooter, where you have teenage guys, and that's what it normally is, teenage guys sitting around their video game for hours a day with the games playing where they are the first-person shooter, where they're, the goal of the game is to go out and kill as many people as you can. It's warfare. And so they are uh, sneaking up on uh, people and killing them. There is one game that I reviewed last year 
And some of you might have uh, remembered that program where it talked about, it's called Assassin. And it's all about you being the assassin. It's from your eyes, your viewpoint, first person shooter, first person killer. And where it takes teenage guys, uh, mostly guys, uh, young guys play these games, and it turns them into assassins where they spend hours a day pretending that they're sneaking up behind people with a knife and stabbing them in the heart or cutting their throat or stabbing them in the back or gunning them down, shooting them in the head, shooting them in the heart. Uh, it, all kinds of different ways you can kill a person in this uh, game assassin gives these um, players assignments, who to kill, when to kill them, why to kill them. And you have these teenage guys sitting in their living room or their bedroom or their family room or their basement, and their parents are upstairs watching TV, and they're down there killing people uh, through games like Assassin or uh, Grand Theft Auto or some of these other games uh, that are out there. Now, I'm not saying that we need to ban video games. I'm saying that this is a part of the result of when you de-Christianize and demoralize a culture, then it desensitizes the culture. Where are the parents? Where? Why don't the parents explain to the children, the kids, the teenagers, these boys, you can't go along killing people in your fantasies and not expect that to, to affect you. It's going to infect you mentally. Now, I don't have any information on this young man, this 19-year-old man who killed 17 people at the school in Florida. I don't have any background information on him. Uh, they're not really giving a lot of that right now, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that he's familiar with violent video games. I can, I can, I can just hear it as the reports come in, he did play these because most young teenage guys play them or have played them and like them. And so, and they play them hours and hours a game. So we'll have to look into the background of this guy, this uh, Nicholas Cruz, and find out if he did, in fact, play violent video games because I can almost guarantee you that he did play them and he liked them. And he, many of the ideas in his head that produced the shooting probably came from these video games. That doesn't mean that everybody that plays these video games will act out in violence. Most young guys don't act out in violence, thank God. But there are those that will act in violence, and they've been desensitized to violence through the use of these video games. But that's not the only thing. In the de-Christianization, de-spiritualization, demoralization of culture, we also see f forms of violence in the media and in television and movies more and more and more. You, you have these uh, shows and these movies like Deadpool. I mean, it's just violence after violence. John Wick uh, 1, John Wick 2, where it's not enough to just... Uh, shoot someone like the old cowboys and Indians uh, westerns that they used to have on the big screens uh, 30, 40 years ago where there was a gunshot and then you'd see somebody uh, fall off their horse. Uh, no, it's not that way anymore. Now it's they shoot somebody in the head and they show the head splattering like a pumpkin that explodes when it's thrown up against a brick wall. It's just it's this computer graphic uh simulation that intensifies the violence and that's what these young people have grown up on also so it's not just the violent video games they're also uh, part of this violent media culture where you have these violent video games I mean, not video games but regular cinema thea theater uh, movies and it's not just one occasionally it's not just war movies you know, it used to be in the older uh, generations, you would see war movies and there would be shooting and there would be killing. Or you'd see, like I mentioned before, cowboys and Indians where uh, you would see uh, people being shot off their horse or all these kinds of things. But the graphic details were not there. But today with computer graphics, they can be there and they are there. And it's not just occasionally once in a while, some of these violent video games and um, violent uh, movies come out. It's every single week 
every batch of movies that Hollywood produces, there's going to be a percentage, a pretty high percentage of them are going to be these action adventures where there is violence. And it's not just violence, symbolic violence, it's graphic violence, bloody violence, um, gory, uh, red uh, brains being splattered all over the place. It's graphic violence. And that's unfortunately the environment that these young guys are raised in today with the de-Christianization of culture. And we're going to see, unfortunately, more of these mass shootings. It's not a matter of uh, politics and government stepping in and confiscating everyone's gun. It's a matter of our culture having some kind of a spiritual and moral revival where people say, we don't want these values, this nihilistic value system, this materialistic value system, this uh, immoral, um, rampant, immoral sexual culture. We don't want that. We fight against that because that's bad. That's a bad thing to have in society. And it's bad for teenagers. It's bad for youth. It's bad for young people, especially because at that age group, they're still trying to come to grab grips with reality and what they believe and what their values are. And unfortunately, they're not being uh, taught uh, biblical values or worse yet, they're being, they're undermining biblical values in the public schools. They're teaching uh, uh, this nihilistic view of the world. They're teaching the uh, atheistic Richard Dawkins evolution. They're teaching the so-called values clarification, which is basically how do you feel about this and uh, what values do you hold dear? And, and they're not teaching the, the classical, uh, traditional, Christian, biblical, moral values. And, well, people aren't following them anymore, um, especially younger people. And we have to uh, decide as a culture, uh, are we going to continue to go in the secular direction? Or are we going to return to a more sane and a more civil time where Christian values were allowed to permeate in our culture through civic and public forums? Um, they took prayer out of school. Uh, they're stripping um, the Ten Commandments out of the schools. You can't even put that up as a plaque. That's an imposition of religion, so, supposedly. And these kind of symbolic uh, secular, secularizing uh, tactics, it's really showing up in our society. So we need to pray about that. And I hope that this has helped you understand a little bit of what's happening today with these school shootings. We'll see you back next week on another edition of Christ and Culture. God bless. Hey!